Hi, welcome to the Smart History video. I'm here with Ryan. Hey, how's it going? Hey, it's going good, okay. We're gonna do some art today, it's gonna be friggin' awesome. Okay, so, we're gonna start off here with Ryan's piece. Uh, it's the, it's, it's a really interesting piece here. Um, it looks almost kinda like impressionist or expressionist. Uh, what is this work of art? What's it called? This is The Joy of Life by Henry Matisse. And it was painted in 1905 and finished in 1906. And it's actually, it's not impressionistic, it's, um, it's actually what started the expressionist movement. What was the thinking behind this, this piece of work? Like, what was the artist trying to express in this work of art? Well, just like in the name, it's, Matisse is trying to express joy here. He has all these bright, warm colors, all these, you know, happy people, everything, all this wide open space, vivacious colors, the open setting. It's all, it's really trying to express joy. Oh, okay, cool. So how does, how does he achieve that effect of expressing joy? Like, how does he get that across to his viewer audience? Well, if you, uh, if you look in the painting and you look at the people, what they're doing, they're all doing things that, you know, express happiness or that would make you happy. Like one, someone's listening to music. You have people dancing in the background, the couple making love, like in the front. Everything is, it has this youthful feel. Everything, everything is happiness in a golden age. So you said this sparked an expressionist movement, right? You said that? Yeah. W was it part of another movement, another ism by any chance? Yeah, it was part of the Fauvism movement. Um, expressionist, ex expressionism came afterwards, but this is one of the things that inspired that. And Fauvism is, is basically they, they called the, the people who painted these paintings like this fauves because, which means wild beasts, because of the wild, vivacious colors they used and the, the foreshortening of perspective and the, unaf the unfinished appearance of the paintings. Uh, made it seem kind of wild and raw and sort yeah, of untamed. Exactly. Yeah, kind of, like, kind, of like, kind of raw emotion in a way, kind of raw, just, yeah, ideas kind of in the raw. It's really interesting. Yeah, cool. That's really, it's really neat, man. Thanks for that. My info was gathered from modernism research at yale.edu and college art journal an article by carla gottlieb mm -hmm. way to go cool okay so now we're going to move on to brandon's painting so this is also a really interesting one can you tell us what this is about like uh, what is this painting uh this is a uh, son of man by renee magritte and it was painted in 1946. so how significant was this exact painting in the surrealist movement oh it, it became very famous actually it's it's very well known it's been parodied quite a few times you know in modern culture just in commercialism and like visual advertising so it's it's really it's just a very simple image compared to stuff like salvador dali but it's actually made quite a bit of an impact Okay, so what what's happening here? What's it trying to express? Well, this is a piece of surrealist art, you know, and it, it kind of stands out from most surrealistic art uh, paintings like that because most surrealism is really known for creating wild landscapes and just really bizarre imagery. And this one is really just kind of a guy with an apple in front of his face. It's just yeah. kind of, you know, just kind of awkward. It's kind of, you know, odd. You know, it's kind of like a guy trying to cover up a pimple or something, you know. It's, <laughs> it's like, you know, or something like that. Magritte was an artist who always wanted to express levels of experience that go beyond surface appearances. And he did this by taking objects and images that we recognize from our daily lives. And he kind of changed their forms and relationships and kind of how those relationships, like how objects are related to each other. You know, like things like baseball, a baseball bat and like a baseball. And he would toy with, he would toy with their relationship and everything like that. You know, just things that we know from everyday life, and you just totally make us see them in a different way. Remember, this was the guy who did the, um, this is not a pipe. Same you know? person? Yeah, it's the same guy. That was Rene Magritte, and he, he did this painting as well. And I think in this this work of art, well, the thing is there's been a lot of different theories going around. And some people actually think it has, like, religious undertones, like, you know, son of man could mean Jesus. You know, you think about the apple of creation. You know, and we all know that Jesus was tempted just like any other man, you know. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of like, so it's almost like the apple is like dangling in front of his face or something like that. Like he's suffering the same temptation we are. But if you ask Rene Magritte himself, he said that uh, the apple only partially hides the face among and making the face only like visible but hidden. You know, it's, you know, it's like we know his face is there. We can't fully see it. You know, so furthermore, Magritte said that everything we see hides under another thing. And we always want to see what is hidden, but what we 
we see, you know. And so I think in this piece, he's exploring our human interest and trying to see what is behind the things we see every day and the tension and conflict between the visible and what we know exists but is hidden. It just, it just, in all, I think he's kind of commenting on things in our reality and our society that we know exist but are hidden behind common images, you know. And when we look, as we look at this painting, we kind of become frustrated because we want to see what is underneath the apple, but we can't. And I believe that was his intention to kind of make us realize and experience the conflict in our everyday lives. And that's my two cents on the whole subject. <laughs> yeah. I got my information from ReneeMagritte.org and from the book, The Dictionary of Art, Volume 20, from uh, Jane Turner, who's the editor. <laughs> Thank you.